To become a better professional photo retoucher, here are five basic steps or five basic things you should know. Number one, try to keep your image as natural as possible while retouching. And you can actually achieve this by actually using the correct focus separation blur radius. Because the focus separation gaussian blur radius you use actually play a big role to determine if your image is going to look realistic or it's going to look fake. So for example, if I'm to retouch a full portrait image like this one shown on the screen right now, I'm going to use a focus separation blur radius of about 3 to 4. While if I was to retouch a portrait image from the waist upward, I'm going to be using a focus separation blur radius of about 4 to 7. While if I'm going to retouch a headshot or a beauty image or a close-up image, I'm going to be using a focus separation blur radius of about 8 to 25. So you can just test out those focus separation blur radius depending on the image you are actually working on. Okay, for example, let's take a look at this image. So if I was to retouch this image right here, I'm going to use a focus separation blur radius of about 6 for this image right here. So I'm just going to come to my actions and click on focus separation system bit because this image is system bit. So if you actually want this my action, I'm giving that for free. I'll be leaving the link where you can download it in the description below. So I'm going to use 6 for this image or 6.4 and click on OK. Now after that, I'm just going to pick my mixer brush tool and just hide my high texture copy right here and just brush on the image like that with this focus separation blur radius. And you are going to see the image is going to look smooth after we finish doing it and also it's going to look natural at the same time. Okay. All right. Now let's see the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. Now you can see how smooth it is and we still have the texture and it's still looking natural. So if I was to retouch this image, I will remove the blemishes. But I just want to show you how focus separation Gaussian blur radius actually affects your image. And also if I use a lower number for this image, the image is going to be looking too smooth. Let me just do that for the sake of this tutorial. So I'll just delete focus separation and just come back again. Create another focus separation. This time, let's say I use the focus separation blur radius of about 3 for this image. You are going to see the image is going to look too smooth. Alright? So if I just brush on the image right now. Let me just be fast about this. I'm just trying to make a point right now. That's what I'm trying to do. So I just want you to get the point I'm trying to make. Alright? So let me just brush on this image so you can actually see the difference. Alright, now let me see. We are good. You can see the image is looking too smooth. I don't really like it like this, but people prefer their image like this, but I don't really like it. And if you're the type that prefers your images like this, it's good for you. Keep using it if that's what you want, but I really like my image to look natural. Alright, so I'm just trying to make a point how focus separation actually affects how natural your image is. Number two basic step to help you become a better professional retoucher is to know what to fix and when to fix something on the image you are working on. So for example, if you are working on an image that does not require you to do the eyes and teeth whitening, you don't have to do it. And also, if you are working on an image that's already sharp, you don't have to add sharpness to your image. Some images already look good straight out of camera. All you have to do is just try to balance the exposure and try to make the color look good. That's all you should do. Sometimes, if you are trying to add something to the image or add a lot of edits or a lot of elements to the image, after you finish editing the image, instead of the image to look good, the image is just going to look bad, it's going to look over edit and it's not going to look good. So, just fix what needs to be fixed and leave it like that. So, just fix what is not broken. And number three, this is very important. You should learn how to balance your raw file before bringing it to Photoshop for the scale touching. And it doesn't matter which raw processing software you use. It can be Capture One, it can be Lightroom, it can be Camera Raw. It doesn't really matter. Just try as much as possible to balance your raw file before bringing it to Photoshop for scale retouching. Because the way you balance your raw file actually determines how the final result is going to be. So look at this raw file right here on the screen. Now, if I just add exposure to the image, that means after I finally retouch this image, I'm going to get this kind of exposure. Or let me just come to the color. If I just play with the white balance of this image, any white balance I choose when balancing the raw file is going to play an important tool on the final result of this image. So if I just add a cool white balance, the image is going to look cool after I finish retouching the image. While if I add a warm white balance, the image is going to look warm after I finish editing the image. My point is you should try as much as possible to balance your image before bringing it to Photoshop. So take your time to actually do that. Alright, now number four basic step to help you become a better professional retoucher is to actually master Photoshop. I know it's 
it sounds really really simple but it's the truth there are a lot of photo retouching software out there so people will use their mobile phone to retouch their image but if you want to become a professional i advise you just learn how to use photoshop because you have more flexibility than any other software out there photoshop gives you everything you need as a professional retoucher and number five if you want to become a better professional retoucher always ask for feedback now i can't stress this enough now let's say you do a job for a client make sure you always ask for feedback if the client actually likes the job or what you can do to actually improve if i do a job for a client i always ask for feedback what can i do to improve do you like the image sometimes i get feedback from client and they say no i don't like it like this you should have done it like this or i don't like the way you clean the background you should have done it like this and it gives me room for improvement so i try as much as possible to ask any client i do job for what can i do to improve and if you want to learn how to retouch your image it's just one click click on this video right here i'll see you guys in my next one stay creative